Man Called Otto is directed by Mark Forster and stars Tom Hanks and is a remake of the Swedish film A Man Called Uva. Otto is a grump who's given up on life following the loss of his wife. When a young family moves in nearby, he meets his match in his new quick-witted neighbor, leading to a friendship that will turn his world around. A Man Called Otto is exactly the kind of movie that I expected it to be when I sat down in the theater to watch it, which was a very heartwarming movie with an older grumpy guy who slowly, eventually, learns to be a little less grumpy. I was probably the youngest person in the theater, and that's not a problem. This is actually really good because theaters right now are struggling to bring back older audiences. It's mostly people who are in their 40s and under who are sort of supporting theaters right now. And, and movies like A Man Called Otto have to do well. Old people have to go back to the theater. And I was happy to see that even at a later showtime, it was actually fairly full. There were a lot of people there. And I noticed that whenever anything dramatic happened, you got those older people, oh no, it's like in the background of the theater. Tom Hanks is very good in the movie, that's no surprise. He's always really good, but here especially, this is a kind of unique role for him in that he is such a lovable actor and he's kind of known for being so sweet and playing these characters that you just want to hug. So to play a character that is completely on the opposite side of that spectrum and do it so well, I thought it was really fun to see him flex that side of his dramatic chops. And they're very careful about how they present Otto. He is not portrayed as a bigot. He is not hateful. He just is very annoyed with everyone. And so in that way, they separate him from some other characters in films who are older men who are pissed off at society. Films like Gran Torino, for instance, where you've got an older guy who's very grumpy and hates everybody, and he's got these neighbors who show him a better way of life. But at the same time, that character was definitely harboring a lot of animosities and prejudices, and Otto doesn't seem to be. He just equally is annoyed with everybody. So in some ways, the film sidesteps some deeper issues that it could look at for an older man like Otto who's experiencing some of the things he's experiencing in life and some of these new desires he has that are not very pleasant. Uh, I'm not going to get into them because YouTube's policy for talking about things is so crazy now where if I even say like any specific word this entire video will get demonetized but to put it in a way that you understand Otto does not enjoy waking up in the morning anymore and uh, this movie explores different ways of, of how he is constantly reminded that he should wake up in the morning and should enjoy it. And I'll be honest, man, I, I did cry at the end of this movie, and, and it, a lot of people are saying it's like super sentimental and it pulls at your heartstrings in all these ways that aren't genuine, and I don't know, maybe it's because I'm just a big blubbering, fool who is a parent now and I feel very deeply about scenarios like that and this movie has one specific element that really got to me and I thought it was handled very well. The performances all around are very very good. In particular Mariana Trevino who plays his new neighbor. If I said her name incorrectly I apologize. I thought she was wonderful in the movie. She was everything that character had to be. Someone who can just not take any of Otto's shit and just deal with it and show him that there is a better world out there. I like Mark Forrester a lot. I love his movie Stay. The fact that he got that movie made, I will respect him forever for that. And uh, if you haven't seen my analysis of that, check it out. He did. He said I was right. He liked it. Ewan McGregor watched it because of him and told me that he liked it at the Critics' Choice Awards. It was this amazing moment. So I've always had uh, a bit of a fandom for Mark Forrester and like Finding Neverland is great as well. He does a lot of risky choices in his movies. And in this film, he has some flashback sequences and he uses songs that are a bit jarring. And there's this interesting sort of middle ground you have to tread when you use a song in a movie because obviously you want the audience to notice that the song is working, kind of. You don't want them to notice the song though and get removed from the scene. And I did notice in that way sometimes. And I do think that the flashbacks are a bit excessive. I don't necessarily need to know everything that they told me. And the movie is a little bit 
too long because of those flashbacks, I think. But the truth of the matter is, is at the end of the day, this is a film you just don't really see that much anymore. It's a movie aimed at older audiences about an older man who is shown a new way of life. And we've seen movies like that before. But from all of the sniffling and crying and laughing that I heard throughout the course of this movie, audiences are going to love this film. And I think this is just one of those movies where the critics are not going to be on the same wavelength as the audience. I mean, that's obvious if you look at the scores that the film is getting between the two on various websites, not just on Rotten Tomatoes. People like the movie. Uh, critics are kind of like, eh. So go support it in theaters. I do think movies like this need to be seen. And if you're watching my channel and you are an older audience member, go to the goddamn theater. Get out. Go. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.